I'll do. Yes, you are a lovely boy. Steady. Steady. Show the new subscribers what a good lad you are. Oh, you're giving me a paw. There's a good lad. How do? Right, I've had a bit of a tough week at home. Um, you know, stress, mental health, things around us. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, last September I had a heart attack, but the week before my, or a couple of weeks before my daughter was diagnosed with anorexia. Um, children, you know, when they're not well, it affects you badly. However, we've got a bit of a plan. I'm going to crack on like you do, because that's what you do, isn't it? Right, little update. My studio's gone. <laughs> I'm sure you're all aware that most of my interviews I have done in the car. The family car has gone, needs muss, and I'm back on my motorbike. Yeah, which I enjoy. So, first thing, if you want to contact me, uh, get in touch, you want to interview, just have a chat, ask me a question. Every video on the channel now, in the description, click on the description as an email, that is the only way you can contact me now. Uh, I will be logging into that every day. So apologies, anyone who's tried to contact me before. I've had various emails or whatever. That's the one now, every single video. Um, <laughs> you know, some of you guys out there, um, if you've got a shed, a garden, we can get a nice day, a little corner of your world. I'll travel on my motorbike, see ya, and we'll get an interview going. I realise that some of you might not want to be on the back of my motorbike. Um, and the sound quality might not be that good. But I'm getting back on the road. A lot of normal folk. If you're not from this country, folk is just people. A lot of people I've met in my life are interesting people. I'm going to be interviewing them. Going back to my roots, Sheffield. Uh, some of these people don't know yet, but I'm going to be interviewing them. They've had interesting lives. Uh, criminal justice and mental health with a big focus on the mental health. It's affecting everybody. We've got to support each other, guys. Uh, you know, support your friends. Where's your ball? Don't be losing that, lad. See ya. Yes, go on. Supporting each other. Right, before I do today's vlog, I'll give you an update. Uh, where are we now with social media? So, today's vlog, I'm going to talk about uh, a guy. Before I do, let me tell you, around about 2002, 2003, and this is to show you how far we've come in 20 years, I had a little Nokia. Yep, yay big. It was rubber, or most of it was. And I bought it on the pretense of being a clumsy get. Um, it could be thrown at a wall and it wouldn't break. You could text and phone on it. It was a phone. No emojis. You know, if you want to put a smiley face. It was two dots and a bracket. Or a dot and a comma and a bracket. You know, a winking smiley face. Look at what we have now. 20 years later. So let's talk about this guy, Toby Studebaker. I'm watching, uh, watching Steve, we're going in the bushes with the hogweed, nasty stuff. This way you, let's plonk ourselves down over here. So this guy's an American Marine, I am working in the private sector, private sector prison, Forest Bank in Salford. I'm in the segregation unit. Solitary confinement, that's what everyone knows and understands. It is what it is, that solitary confinement. So we get this guy as an orderly. Somebody mentions he's an American Marine. So I'm thinking, my eye, puffed out chest, flat top. Yeah? First time I opened him up in the morning, the orderly's job was basically to clean. Clean the showers, clean the exercise yard. Uh, they would clean cells when people left. Uh, you know, whatever needed doing in the segregation, they needed to be trusted souls as well. So opens him up, he was short and dumpy. 
probably as wide as he was tall. He had a flat top, so I was partly right with that. Stephen, come away from that. Um, pleasant manner, polite. Just got on with the job. Obviously got the American twang going on. Um, no idea what he was down there for or what his crime was. Before working on the healthcare at Strangeways, which was a small community, mostly staffed by uh, nurses, healthcare assistants who were all lasses and very few prison staff. When I was on there, you need to know who you were dealing with. There were some dangerous people. Prior to that, not so much. You know, I was on wings. Uh, unless I was required to do a report for somebody or something like that, I'd have no idea what they was in for. I had no idea what this lad was in for at that time. Uh, I think I was living Rochdale Way, Whitworth, little village. Um, didn't watch a lot of TV or anything like that. I worked a lot of hours. Uh, yeah, crimes get in the media, on TV and the like, but not like now. You know, you pick up your phone now, loosely speaking, phone is a tiny bit of what that, what that thing in your hand does that all kids have got, including my daughter, and she's had a while, you know. Um, all sorts of information on there, all sorts of stuff flashing up. So this guy, incidentally, when I sign off here, if you want to stay around three or four minutes, I'm just going to read a little article about him, give you a bit more detail. So this guy, uh, labelled in some of the press and media, because I did find out what he was down there for, as the first sort of internet paedophile. He groomed a lass, he groomed a lass from the Manchester area. She has since done articles saying about her experiences where it's left her with PTSD and the like. Um, so yeah, basically they got chatting in the chat room. Stephen, come here. Stevie, come here. Come here. Chatting in the chat room. Sorry guys, keeping him out of there. Come here. Come on. In a chat room. Come here. Lie down. I was in a chat room. Oh, waggy tail. Uh, groomed her. At first, he thought she was 17. It was a, ch a children's chat room. Later found out she was only 12, 13. Arranged to meet her. Came to this country, met her at Manchester, in Manchester, uh, and went on the run, basically. In Europe, uh, there was a big media thing at the time, TVs and stuff. Uh, so we've got a guy who's late 20s, running around Europe, as it were, with a young lass. Uh, must have called her family so much upset. Uh, I don't know, you know, at that age, they're not mature enough. I, I just don't know. So this guy, you know, like I said, um, for me, he was very childlike. Say, being in the Marines and stuff, he was not what I expected. Um, I didn't dislike the guy. However, the crimes, you know, I was shocked. I was genuinely shocked when I found out what he'd done. He got four years um, to serve in this country. And then he got extradited to America where he did 10. Americans have got it right with these people. These people who groom kids, arm kids, sex offenders and like, they get way, they get proper sentences. You know, he served 10 years in America and rightly so. So he did 14 in total, which is a proper sentence for grooming a young girl and probably ruining her life, leaving her with PTSD and God knows what else. Um, I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Uh, it's a lovely day. Uh, I'm gonna do two or three vlogs this week. And like I said, I'm going to be back on the road interviewing people. There will be times when I can use our lass's car. Uh, but with the what's happening with the economy and that now, price of petrol and diesel, you know, if, if you live 250 miles away from me, it's an expensive day out to come and interview people. I will be using Zoom, StreamYard and the like, short interviews, and then hopefully as things improve, 
I'll be able to get out and do one-to-one -one live. I like talking to people face-to-face. -face. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, welcome to new subscribers. Thanks for all the continued support. And uh, I'll see you back in the office. Parting shot as always. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> I'll sit there. Boom. And we're back in the room. Very short article this. But, you know, I've described my little Nokia phone, what it was 20 years ago, and how far we've come now with phones and the like. And everybody's got one. Kids have got them. Uh, they've taken over people's lives, really. Um, so in 20 years, what's improved in child safety? Nothing. It's got worse, hasn't it? Because like I said, we all get as kids phones. The other kids have got phones. We don't want them to feel left out. We don't want them getting bullied. You know, um, I'm, I'm sure there's apps out there that can make phones safer or whatever, but the world is a dangerous place. And in 20 years, we've done nothing to educate our kids, have we? Social media is an absolute minefield and nightmare. You know, uh, I keep harping on about this, but in schools now, we need to be educating them. And the other thing is, um, kids kids are more open more honest they speak the truth and the like uh, maybe we've lost something with our kids how we're bringing them up and that and you know teaching them about or, or the fact that some people uh, don't have money don't have a, a stable home family background you know social situations and that might not have two loving parents, might not have any parents. And kids, you know, I'm quite sure if we put this across right, would take this on board because kids are the best people to look after kids. If there's a kid in the class who's quiet and shy and might not be dressed well or whatever, you know, we need to teach them about empathy. Yeah. Alas, I used to work with. Uh, she got brutalised by the prison service because she whistle blew. However, she picked herself up, dusted herself down and she's now working. She's now back in a job with a career um, and credit to her. She knows who she is. But as a kid, she was abused and it came to a head when a couple of her friends, you know, asked her what was going on. Something was wrong. They knew. She told them friends and as a group, they confronted her abuser. That's very powerful, that. You know, it doesn't take away the pain uh, and everything else, but it is a very powerful thing. And for me, teaching kids now, because once they leave school, it's a cruel world and it's a tough world. So, very short article. Ex-US Marine gets 11 years for abducting girl. Her name's not mentioned in this. I don't need to mention her name. Uh, I have read articles that she's done herself speaking about it. At the time, uh, because of her age, you know, not so much. Anyway, 11 years in America after serving for in this country. Like I said, that is a proper sentence for an abuser. For me, yes, uh, sex offenders and the like do not get the sentences they should. If you ruin someone's life, you know, you need to be serving a sentence. A former US Marine has been sentenced to more than 11 years in prison for abducting and sexually assaulting a 12-year-old British girl he contacted over the internet. Toby Studebaker from Michigan appeared before a federal judge in the city of Kalamazoo yesterday after pleading guilty last November to charges of possessing child pornography and transporting a child across international borders for the purpose of sexual exploitation. The girl's disappearance in July 2003 triggered alarm in the UK about the safety of the internet and prompted an international manhunt for Studebaker. He had flown into Manchester to meet the girl, then took her to Paris. The former serviceman who had been described, oh sorry, who had been decorated for a tour of duty in Afghanistan no dis on the Marines, this, this, these people are everywhere. 
uh, was eventually arrested in Frankfurt, Germany on his way to surrender at the US consulate, hours after the girl flew back to England from Stuttgart. The US Attorney's Office in Grand Rapids said yesterday Studebaker was, a, was given a concurrent sentence of seven years and three months on the child pornography count and 11 years and four months for the assault. Concurrent means they run together. If they've had them added up 18 and a half years, again, that's a proper sentence, isn't it? In 2004, he was jailed in Manchester for four and a half years after admitting charges of abduction and gross indecency in the same case. He was extradited to the United States on his release. His victim from Greater Manchester, who cannot be identified for legal reasons, went missing in July 2003 after she told her parents she was going shopping with friends. She had in fact met Studer Baker at Manchester Airport and travelled on to London and Paris before going on to Strasbourg and Stuttgart. Studebaker had claimed he believed the girl was 19. At the end of the trial in Manchester, Judge Mr Justice Leveson said that Studebaker had, through the internet, groomed an impressionable child into a relationship with the result that, with the result that she practised a deception on her family she left her home and travelled with you to France and then on to Germany. Uh, can't even imagine it was like for the family. Any more protected now children? No. Any easier access to children? I would say so. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, like I said, a couple more vlogs this week. Already pending. And hopefully, before the end of the week, I'll have done at least one interview. Thanks for continued support. Welcome new subscribers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. I'll see you there.